All right. So we're here with Pro Coach Henry, the inventor of the Fierce Reflex Bag, and father to Ryan Garcia, other known as King Rye. That's right. Thanks for being here. Of course. Thank you. Uh, we're going to start from the beginning. So okay. where are you originally from? Well, I'm originally from Chicago, actually. That's where I grew up, of course. And then I came to L.A. to study. Um, and from that point, I um, started getting interest. Was out, my interest was into boxing as well. You know, it, it originally in Chicago, but then I carried over here in Los Angeles. And from that point, it just escalated into um, something as big as it is now. So in the early days, what was your upbringing like? My upbringing was pretty good. I mean, it was actually, you know, um, just studying, you know, and learning a lot and understanding, you know, the um, subjects that I, you know, I was taking in, in um, high school and then in college. And then I got into, of course, um, networking. And, um, you know, but my passion has always been music, you know. And then, so I studied that and became a jazz musician. But I wanted something to, you know, something... Um, different you know for for myself and for my kids and I ended up picking on boxing how many siblings so there were six of us you know unfortunately my sister passed but um it was five boys and one girl what was it like growing up with your siblings man you know it was great because um they were the older ones and I was the youngest and I learned a lot from them so whatever they did I wanted to do the same and I wanted to be better than they were so it's like my task was to be better, you know, than they were. And sometimes I could do it, sometimes I couldn't. I had to be competitive with, with, with five brothers. You know, competitive is an understatement because that's exactly what it was. Because <clears throat> they were all good at whatever they were doing. And I just followed. I followed and I learned. I said, well, you know what? If I can't beat them, I can beat them in other areas. And that is so important for somebody to understand. Remember, you can have siblings, and they're, you know, they have their own path. If you want to follow them and say, well, you know, I could be like them, mm -hmm. that's fine. But if you can't achieve what they're achieving, then you have to take your own path. You have to choose your own path. And, and, and when that happens, you could say, well, you know what? I'll be better in this area. Because sometimes you can't reach what they're doing. And you might end up losing a lot of years, so be careful. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So before you became an inventor, yes, what was your occupation? Well, I was a network administrator. I was a systems um, engineer in computers. I received that. Um, Bill Gates actually signed my um, certificate, but I became an MCSE, which is called Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. And so I was um, I was an administrator for a local district. And then I also um, started teaching computer science, you know, so that was my profession. And after that, mm -hmm. uh, you got into numerous other, other uh, job descriptions, right? Uh, different uh, uh, mm -hmm. jobs. You're a truck driver. Right. Uh, I was, yeah, I was just, do, I was a truck driver because I had to continue making money, um, because my kids were in tournaments and I need to support, you know, you have to support your family no matter what. So in computers, it was good, but I, I got bored in, I got bored actually, you know, and I, I ended up resigning and not too many people resigned from a, a government position. You know, I did and I only took a leap of faith because I saw that my kids were doing good in their career. So as a truck driver, I would be able to just do, you know, work, park it, and then go see them. But what I did was I ended up using my brother to help to assist me with the training at first. And then that, that helped me a little bit. But after that, I ended up, you know, due to his circumstances, I ended up taking um, matters into my own hand. I started, you know, learning and teaching them how to box. Yeah, so you mm -hmm. became a coach, That's ultimately. Right. Uh, like I mentioned before, uh, you're the father of Ryan Garcia, mm -hmm. also known as King Rye. <laughs> right. Uh, very popular in the sport of boxing, uh -huh. has a huge social media following, and he's in the limelight once again 
for the highly anticipated fight with Javante Tank Davis. Now, this fight has been brewing for, for years now. Mm -hmm. And the question that people keep asking is, is this fight really going to happen? Absolutely. It's already scheduled for April 15th uh, of next year. So we're good to go. Um, Ryan wanted to do, well, actually not Ryan, but his promoter wanted him to do a, a tune-up fight. But as you guys already know, um, he decided to not go that route and decided just to focus on tank, which I don't blame him because that's a fight that you cannot take lightly. How important is this fight in Ryan's career? Well, Ryan is um, is a perfectionist, and I, he knows that this, what he's doing, it's going to take time to get to a level where he could excel. He could show people who he really is, because a lot of people say, oh, well, you're a YouTube fighter, you're this and that, you know, you, that's all you do is on the media, you're just an actor, so to speak. But it's not true because he started when he was seven. So it means a lot to him to prove to people that, you know what, he is who he is, who he say he is. Right. Because he's a superstar. No, well, he is. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't just become a superstar mm -hmm. overnight. It takes right. time, it takes effort. It takes all those hours in the gym mm -hmm. to, 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 to become, become somebody like that, right. to it's, hold that title. That's correct. It's a, it's a journey. And it's been a journey since he was seven years old. Right. Mm -hmm. So he used to be trained by the the Canelo camp. Eddie Reynoso was his was his trainer. Sure. Now he's with Joe Goosen. Right. Uh, why the change? Well, you know, just like anything else, you know, you're just um, you come to work, and everybody should come to work, and if not everybody's there when you're there you know, there's gaps and in boxing you can't have too many gaps we can be very understanding which we are but when it comes to boxing you can only be understanding so much because it's a sport that you know a lot of bad things can happen so you have to all be in the same page all in the same room and if you're not then you have to make a decision which we did and how is the training with Joe Goosen now? Training with Joe Goosen is, has been very good to us. Um, it's a it's it's a full time thing for him, and he's old school, and we don't have to worry about him not showing up because he's there before we are. So it's it's perfect. Um, and no disrespect to the Canelo camp because they're awesome, but you know when you have somebody the caliber of Ryan. Um, if he isn't going through something or if he isn't sick, he's there to train. And if he's there to train, then you guys have to be there. And Joe Goosen has really made it known that, hey, I'm here for you guys. So um, we're happy about that. Yeah, completely understandable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a coach, you want to be there for your, your, your athletes. Sure. And you got to give them your attention mm -hmm. at all times. Because uh, especially boxing, boxing, you don't play boxing. It's a serious sport. It's a, it's a very serious sport. It's something that you have to be well educated with it, and you have to know the history, and you have to understand politics as well. You know because that plays a big role. But there's one thing that can defeat politics is your skills, and when you have skills and you're very marketable, it outweighs the politics. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Speaking of politics, mm -hmm. you have a, uh, another son, Sean Garcia, mm -hmm. who just participated in a fight yeah. in South Korea. Mm -hmm. it, it was a good fight. Yeah. And a lot of controversy with that fight. I saw the fight, and I saw it as mm -hmm. he was robbed. Oh, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, he was. He was. He was literally uh, uh, robbed from that victory. But, you know, again, you have to understand that uh, you're in another country. You know, you're in South Korea. So... You have to know their rules, and no matter what, there's always politics involved. But the good news about my experience is that as I was coming down the ring, I noticed that there was a scorecard that was tampered with, and by law, you're not supposed to be changing things, you know, especially as crucial as, as boxing may be. You gotta, you gotta stay on the level. Um, 
And I brought it to their attention. And I said, hey, I saw Mark. I said, you're not supposed to change your scorecards, which he did. And um, that, that's a big no-no. So the commissioner was, was told, and he officially changed the L to it being a draw. But again, you know, it's not a loss. It's a draw. And I don't even know if it's an official fight because we never got to see a doctor before or after. Um, and they didn't look at our hand wraps while we were wrapping our hands, you know. So it just wasn't as official as it should have been. So I don't know if it's a, if it's a real fight or it's going to count as, as a draw on his box wreck. But um, we'll soon find out. I thought it was an uh, exhibition fight. Manny Pacquiao and DK... I agree. That's what I'm saying. There are the few fights that were uh, 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 a um, exhibition, and um, again, if if, it, if Sean wasn't an official uh, uh, exhibition, then we're going to take it as what it is. Because I'm not worried about a now. I'm worried about the health. If anything, they both came out okay. You know, of course, his opponent got beat up, but it's just. Um, you know, you have to you have to worry about the outcome. Was it okay? Did did, did he survive? Because once you get knocked out, you're restricted to fight for for like three to six months. You're restricted, maybe longer. Sometimes you're indefinitely until they feel that you're back, you're good. But you gotta be careful. That's why you can you don't play boxing. How do you feel about that? No loss on your record. That that zero, mm. that that boxes are are. It's becoming a, a kind of trendy ever since Mayweather put it out there like that. How well, do you feel about the zero? You know, I I, I don't like it at all because uh, there's other fights out there that could be made. You know, whether you win or lose. I mean, you lose, you lost. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, you lost because styles do make fights. You know, and if you lost. Oh, well, you lost. I mean, you know, you just go on to the next one because there's so many people in your weight division, okay? Um, and you see people that have lost in the past, you know, Leonard against um, Duran. You know, he lost. He came back. You know, Duran will lose. He comes back. Hagler will lose. He came back. You know, so it goes on and on and on and on. And the good news is that people, when they like you, they follow you, win or lose. They follow you, win or lose. So that plays a big role in boxing because you have supporters as opposed to enemies. And when you have supporters, they're going to follow you all the way throughout your whole career, and they're going to say, hey, I remember that guy. He had some good fights. I mean, you know, they'll talk about it. Yeah, but he got law. He got beat by this. Yeah, he got beat, but look who did. look who he beat. You know, so it's going to go on. It's a cycle. That's why, you know, a zero to me, it means nothing. It means like, okay, so, you know, but if you really think about it, you know, Julio Sosa Chavez and some other fighters that, you know, got well beyond 50 fights with zero, but they don't make a big thing. Mayweather set that tone, and I think it should be erased from people's mentality, like, hey, don't worry, man. You, you know, they like you anyway. They're going to tune in. You know, Amir Khan. Amir Khan lost so many times. But people tune in to watch him because he's a good fighter. Right? Yeah. Great entertainer. Yeah. You know, and so. that's the thing with boxing. Boxing's a, you're, it's, it's a brutal sport. Mm -hmm. You're going to take L's, you know, yeah. along with the wins. It's a, it's a competitive sport, and it's mm -hmm. something that people want to watch. Right. People are going to watch it regardless of a loss or not. Like you mentioned, back in the day, mm -hmm. these guys fought, they lost, they fought again, <laughs> yeah. and they, be, they were mega fights. Right. And this is what we remember. That's right. You know, the greats, all the greats took a loss. That's right. I mean, that's why you shouldn't be shameful if you, if you, if, if you lost. I mean, it, it, it's just Mayweather set the tone, um, and it shouldn't be something that, your, your trainers or your management team should decide, oh, you know what, let's keep this zero um, as, as much as we can. Because you're not giving the, the fans what they want. I mean, they don't want, look at what Tirafimo is doing. Tirafimo, he was flying high. 
And now it's like, who is he fighting? You know, I, it's like, it is nobody. I'm sorry, but it's true. So you're degrading your, your, your brand. And you're not supposed to do that. If you took a loss, then guess what? Try to find, some, find somebody that's within, you know, rank number five, three, two, one. Try it again. Get back on the horse. Get back on there because you, you prove to people that you could be that caliber. He beat Lomachenko, yeah. okay? Of course, Lomachenko was, was um, injured. It doesn't matter. You lost. He lost. So you're up there now. You know, you lose to Cambosis. Well, okay. I mean, you have another chance. Because why? People like you. People follow you. So you shouldn't worry about another L. I mean, they're going to follow you. He could still post things and people will still like it. So when you're getting thousands of likes, that means something. You got thousands of people that want to see you, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the first time you fell in love with boxing? I fell in love with boxing when I was in Chicago, when it all started, okay? Um, I was in high school, and um, this man that was doing murals, he was um, um, painting murals, he had um, something on the side where you can make money. And he saw me, you know, um, walking down the hall, and he, he liked me. And he goes, hey, Henry, he goes, um, you want to make some money? I'm like, of course. You know, what do I have to do? He goes, I have to fight. I said, what do you mean fight? He goes, box. I said, box? I said, oh, okay. I said, you know, I knew how to street fight. But I said, box? I said, okay. I, I thought, well, there can't be that much difference. And I said, is it okay I bring my brother? because <laughs> he was already into boxing. He goes, yeah, bring him too. Well, my brother ended up finding the, um, the number one contender because that guy dropped out, so my brother took his spot, and I went in there, and I fought, and that's where it all started. So I, from that point, I loved boxing. Wow. Mm -hmm. You were also in martial arts too. Yeah, I was in martial arts because that's the time that Bruce Lee was around. Right. You know, Bruce Lee inspired everybody. Yeah. In fact... I hate to say this, but uh, martial arts was more popular than boxing at one time because of his popularity and what he did. So um, I think one of the fights that they showed in boxing, one guy, you know, took a karate stance. And we're like, what is he doing? You're a boxer. You're not a kung fu artist. You know, but it got to that level. Like, it got scary. You're a boxer, man. You don't have to do no kung fu stuff out here. But, you know, that was just something, a phase that I went through. But I'll tell you, just like anything else, whatever I got into, I got into it really good because it was a, it was a competitive thing in me. And that's something that my kids uh, uh, carried on, you know, where it's like they wouldn't stop at nothing because, you know, they, they want to do something, they're going to do it. So you've, been all, you've always had the... Uh the combat sports in your blood. Absolutely. You know, my whole brothers, you know, dealing with them. Yeah, <laughs> that was right. That was combat, combat in itself. And combat in itself because of what they were, how competitive they were. And, you know, you have to go through those obstacles, you know, with them, you know. But again, you know, I always said to myself that if I can go a different direction, I don't have to follow them. I could be right beside them but in my own path, and I could achieve, and that's exactly what I did. So whatever they were doing here, I was doing over here, and I was accomplishing things on my own, and I didn't have to worry about competing against them or fighting with them. Yeah, you know, had your own lane. Absolutely, and that's the key. You have to have your own name. You have to have your own brand. You have to have your own path. You cannot carry somebody else's path just because they're there. So many people... Yeah, you know, you open the doors for them. That's great. And they're fortunate. But can they be the same as their dad? Mm. Sometimes it doesn't happen. All right. So it's better to choose your own path. Speaking of path, mm -hmm. when did you first come up with the idea for the fierce reflex? Yeah, path? I love that. Well, that's a good question because it all started when the kids were young. I had purchased a bag through Ringside. And it was called a Cobra bag. Um, and I saw the advantages of it because when you would hit it, 
it would bounce back and forth and it would do some things that I was like, hey, you know what? This bag is, you know, I think it better than the double M bag. But it kept on breaking. That was the problem. That was the downfall. It kept on breaking and breaking. So as it was breaking, I was repairing it on my own. I would say, well, if this broke, then I got to fix it like this or I got to fix it like that. And it came to a point where I would call the company and I said, well, I need a replacement for this and that. And then one day they told me that, uh, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, we no longer are going to manufacture this product. It's been discontinued. I was like, oh, wow. All right. So that was the start of Fierce Reflex because now I started saying, well, if it's discontinued, then I'm going to redo it so that it doesn't break. And it took me almost three years to get it right. You know, and now it's one of the popular bags out there. And you can buy it at www.fiercereflex.com. So uh, how difficult was it to turn that idea into a reality? Well, like I said, it took, it took three years because you have to really do the trial and error. And sometimes, you know, trial and error takes a while. You know, you're just not going to perfect something, you know, just like Thomas Edison, you know, the light bulb. You know, it doesn't take, it doesn't happen right away. It takes time. And when something is good, you have to really, really put your mind to it because you're going to have some flaws. You're going to have a lot of things, you know, that aren't going to come out right. Your idea is there. The idea is there. And that's good. You have to patent your idea. And that's something that I did. I patented my product. But you, you, the idea is what's important. And if you have that, now you've got to create it. Now it's got to develop into something that's marketable, something that could benefit the people around the world. And that's exactly what I did. It wasn't, it was first, uh, I first designed it for my son, Ryan and Sean. I designed it for them. But so many people, including Canelo, was thinking, hey, what do you have here? I like it. And then that's when I say, well, you could use it too then. You know, and then I started thinking, well, wait a minute, if they like it, and people, when Ryan would post, we would get hundreds of thousands of people liking and saying, where can I get this bag? Mm -hmm. But I was in the beginning stage of it. So I was, I think, well, wait a minute, if I have to sell this, then it's got to be a legit product. It has to be perfect. And I had to get an engineer. I had to get um, uh, some people to give me some, some um, prototypes, you know, and eventually I was like, okay. So I dissected it and I said, wait a minute, this part is perfect now. I don't have to do anything anymore. Now I got to work on this part. Now I got to do this part. So you dissect it and it comes to a point where you're like, you know what? It's done. And I would say right now it's very close to being complete 100%. But of course, just like anything else, I'm upgrading it. Every year I upgrade it. So come, thousand, come 2023, you're going to have a new uh, Fierce Reflex. First reflex product. Yeah, it's just a process, a trial it's and error. That's it. You know, uh, you didn't reinvent the wheel. You no. just made it better. Absolutely. You're not supposed to reinvent the wheel, but you have to, I can tell you this much, my bag is the best one out there. And I don't mean to say it because it's my company. No, but you got champions using my bags. And in order, and these are champions, you know, Bivol, you know, Canelo, you have Ryan. You have, you know, so many people uh, that are Sinisa Estrada. You have all these people out there that are using this product. Now I've, I've introduced it to the world. So it's something that, that will benefit. And I've got different levels as well. I've got different levels of, that, of my product. So you have, to, you have to understand that as well. You, you know, not this bag is meant for this person. So you got to create another bag that will be good for them, that will suit them. And then for a younger lightweight class, you know, uh, or a younger uh, child or girl, you know, I designed the uh, Fierce Youth um, debut for them. So when did you first realize that you had a, a hot item? 
Well, as soon as I started having Ryan use that product, it was, a, again, it was a, a sample. And he's the one that would test my bag. He's the one that broke all my bags. Yeah. And I'm glad he did. I'm so glad he did. He broke them. And literally, he wanted to break them. Because he told me, Dad, if you're going to have this on the market, I don't want you to be embarrassed and say, oh, man, your dad, he built this, but it's not, it's not good. It's not worth it. No. Let me tell you, him and Canelo, they were the main ones that tested my bag. And Sean, too. They tested my bag because they know how to hit it. They've been doing this for a while now. So I knew that that was a hot item because when I would put it out there, it wouldn't break at the time. It would break like a month after I designed it. But at that moment, it didn't break. And I was like, hmm, I'm doing something right. And I got all these views. And I'll think, wait a minute. There's a hot item here. So let me perfect it. Let me tweak this a little bit more. And that's what, that's what I was doing. Congratulations on that. It's, it's becoming a success. And it's uh, continuing to, to be uh, yeah. very successful for these athletes and just regular people who want to be, want to get in shape physically and mentally. That's the pro elite, the pro elite. So if somebody that always wanted to box but never had the opportunity, right. I would recommend the pro elite because that's very sturdy. It's good for heavyweights. It's good for people that just want to hit and lose weight and take condition. Okay, but if you're an active fighter, somebody that's going to be on TV, somebody that's a professional, this is your trait, then I would recommend highly rent the elite hybrid. That's top of the line. You know, but again, you know, people might say, well, it's a little pricey. It's a little pricey, but you get pay what well, you pay for. You can buy these other products out there. But I'll tell you this much, you ain't going to have a professional hit that bag. They're going to say, what the heck is this? I need something that's going to try to hit me back. And that's what the hybrid does. What's the difference between the Pro Elite and the Hybrid? Well, the Pro Elite is, again, is for people that always want to be a boxer, just want to stay in shape, and they want to do some routines, some boxing techniques, okay? And it's very sturdy enough for heavy weight, heavy um, uh, weight classes, um, such as heavyweights, middleweights, junior middleweights, etc. You know, but the Hybrid is the bag that is like, it's like the uh, Rolls Royce. Okay, that's the one that will, people will say, wow, man, this thing is unbelievable because I designed it enough so that it can withstand the power and the speed that active fighters need going into the ring. And it teaches you how to slip. It teaches you how to hit hard, you know, and the bag's just constantly moving. I mean, you've seen uh, King Ryan hit that bag, and not too many people can hit like that. But... He's active, and that's the difference. Where you need, if, if you're active, you need a product like that, just like a race car, you know, race car driver. You know, if if, if you know you're doing test runs, you're not you're not going to be doing you know, a Volvo. No 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 offense to Volvo, but you're going to need a race car, you know, a Jaguar, you know, a Lamborghini. You're going to need a race car. So there's a difference, and that's something that um, I've designed. You know, where I've taken it to th three levels. Sharpens your skill set, for sure. Absolutely. It does that. And as you could see, Ryan, he's got total precision. You know, he'll hit you when you least expect it because that bag helped him, you know, with his, you know, precision. That's something that's hard to do. And always remember that that bag is way faster than a human being. Okay, a human being won't move as fast. So when Ryan's out in that ring, you can only imagine what he's thinking. This guy's way slower than the first reflex back. <laughs> so he'll catch you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how hard does Ryan really hit? I mean, a lot of people say Ryan, he's mm -hmm. just a social media boxer and all this. Yeah. But you are there mm -hmm. watching Ryan train, watching Ryan hit. Mm -hmm. How fast and how hard does Ryan hit? Well, Ryan's very fast, and speed is power, okay? And having said that, he can really knock out a middleweight at this point in his career, okay? As he gets older, I'm sure he's going to, you know, go beyond that. But right now, I would say a middleweight, he hits just like a middleweight, and he's lightweight. So it's very hard. He hits very hard. Um, in fact, 
the heavyweights, they hit the fierce reflex back, they don't break. Brian hits the fierce reflex back, it can break because he's got that speed. Speed is power, trust me. And it's just, he's very dangerous. How often does Ryan knock people out in training? Is this something that happens regularly or is it every it's, now and then? It's something that happens regularly. It's, it's a high percentage, a high percentage. It's in the high 90s, okay? And that's the truth. I don't want to say more than that because I don't want to sound boisterous or anything like that, but I'll tell you this much. It's in the high 90s, and this is just sparring. The high 90s, not the mid-90s, the high 90s. Wow. Speed is power. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you find the balance between <coughs> running your business yeah. and traveling with all this coaching? That, mm -hmm. You know, you're constantly on the road. You don't live in one house. You're, you're everywhere. So yeah. where do you find the balance where you conduct your business and at the same time you find the time to coach your boys? Mm -hmm. Well, you're asking me very good questions. Um, balancing my life versus my business and my uh, and Ryan's career, um, you have to really dissect everything. You have to understand what is required when and where and how much time you're going to put into it. You can't just scramble away and say, well, I could do everything. No, you're going to, you don't want to be a juggler. You want to be an organizer. So you have to organize your time accordingly. And with my business, I have people that I can rely on that are just, you know, 100%, just like you're saying that, you know, you have, to, in any business, you have to be 100%, you know, do it yourself. Uh, so I have people that have done this for me and they're doing it now. I have workers, I have employees that are helping me so I could balance it that way. So while they're doing that, I mean, I'm in tune, I'm the CEO of the company, so I have to be aware of everybody that's working for me. So they got to do their job. While they're doing that, I'm in training camp with Ryan during the evening. So I handle the business pretty much in the daytime, afternoon, and Ryan, he works out in the evening. So, you know, I balance it that way. So you have to, you have to, you know, understand the, um, uh, the, uh, the time frame that, you have per day or per week, you know, and if Ryan's fighting, let's say in April, you know, you got to know, okay, well, you, know, you got a lot of work ahead of you because work doesn't stop. Not while you have a fight coming up. Yeah, I'm sure it can be uh, stressful at times, especially you being a CEO right. of a company right. uh, and putting that trust into your yes. associates Yes, because you can't trust everybody. There's shady people out there, and you got to put trust in them. Um, and I mean, you, ha you have no choice but to put trust in people uh, mm -hmm. handling your, your product. Right. Well, you know, you're right. I mean, you have to have people that you could uh, rely on that um, are going to uh, help you, not hurt you. You know, and um, I, I, unfortunately, I have people that are helping me and, um, in all areas, you know. And I have to, as a CEO, I have to oversee everybody and make sure that they are doing their part. And so far, people have done their part. My business has been successful, and to this day, it's, it's growing, and it's, I'm, I see it. So it's already established the foundation. Now I just gotta just let it build on its own. And hopefully, you know, even when I die, this business is still gonna carry over because it's, it's, a, it's a cycle. This product just keeps on. It will keep on and keep on. And the good news, I have a patent, D922, 510. So I've already patented my design, my utility design. So, you know, you can't, you can make maybe something similar to it, you know, but you can't copy my design. You can't use the same stuff that I've used because then you're, you know, you're infringing on, on, on my design. Yeah. Sounds like a well-oiled machine. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh have you ever had any hiccups in, in, in your business? Well, absolutely. You know, I mean, you have to have hiccups because that's how you learn if it's working or not. And um, just like in boxing, you know, if somebody you know beats you, you know, you have to make adjustments. 
That's why it's okay to have an L, you know, because, you know, you, you just make an adjustment. And sometimes the adjustment is just more powerful than the original training, you know. But, yeah, I've, 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 you know, I've had hiccups, but, you know, you have to iron them out. And once you iron them out, um, it becomes, um, you become happier because you know you fixed this part. There's a couple more things that I'm still working on, but I'll tell you this much, I'm very close to total perfection, very close to total perfection. Right now, it's good enough to be out there, and, and I give six months warranty on the product, but to have it perfect the way I want it, I mean, we're just about there. Yeah, again, congratulations on, on your uh, Fierce Reflex bag. Mm, thank you. It's doing very well. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the business going in five years? Well, it, again, it's, it's a brand that will carry through the years because everybody is just going to grow up. It's a cycle. You start from the beginning. You can start using the Fierce Youth debut when you're seven or eight years old. And then you can, as you become a teenager, you can still use it, providing your weight class is still, you know, 128, 126, 114, 126. You can still use that bag, perfect. But as you get older, 17, 18, now your body structure has increased, you know? So, and if you've been into boxing, and you upgrade yourself to the to the pro elite, and that will take you to another level. And then when you become 18, 19, 20, and you're still in boxing, now you've already become professional. So now you're active, and now you want the real, real deal. They're all good, but the fierce, uh, the elite hybrid is the one that, um, will take you to that high level. We'll test your your whole ability because it's so fast. They're all fast, yeah. but that one is the fastest. And uh, do you have any more in inventions in mind? You, are, are you going to stick with the bag? Or are you going to come out with anything? you have any ideas? Yeah. Well, actually, I've, I've got gloves that are, that are exclusive okay. for this product. I have um, mitts that are exclusive. So I'm adding things. Good that will support the bag. So you don't have to just go buy certain gloves, like let's say this company or that company. Fierce Reflex will have their own product line. And that's something that I, in, I'm in the process of doing. I already have them ready for sale. I have some, but there's some that are being made as we speak. And those won't be introduced until next year along with the new upgrade that I have for Fierce Reflex. Right. So there's definitely some expansion going on mm -hmm. there. You yeah. got ideas and you got new product coming. Well, I mean, when you're an inventor, you have to because if you got to understand something. If you don't change your product to a point where it's perfected, remember, I'm talking about perfection, not just good. When you want something perfect, you can't really do something that's perfect anymore because you can't redo it. It's perfect. Just like a tripod, just like the light. You can't, you can't change it anymore. You, 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 it's perfect now. You know, well, that's what I do with my bag, my product. I'm getting to a point where I could say it's perfect, so I'm done. It's just like Microsoft when they upgraded, you know. Microsoft upgraded to this, to that, to that, you know. Uh, 2000, 2001, you know, they kept on upgrading. And I see why. Because there was always something better that he could do. Well, I'm the same way. I'm using the same concept as other people would do it. That's why every year, cars of the same model, people are interested, well, wow, look how this car looks like now because they upgrade it, and they're always looking for improvement. Mine is a continuous improvement. I'm going to get to a point where it's like, it's flawless, like, geez, forget it, man, you're done. Yeah, all you got to do is just sell now, because everything works, everything's perfect. And I'm like, whew, I'm about 99.9% .9 there, you know, because my mind's always thinking about how can I improve. 
But next year, you're going to see a whole new line of products coming into the uh, mainstream. So if somebody wants to buy one of your bags, where, where can they get a bag? How, the, how can they uh, get in contact with you? They can, they can reach out to um, First Reflex, www.firstreflex.com. They can purchase it there, or they can, you know, they can email us at info at fiercereflex.com. And can they customize their, their bags? Well, I mean, we've already customized the bag for them. Okay. All, yeah, it's, we've already done that part. If we allow them to customize the bag, then we run into a can of worms. We've opened up a can of worms because now they could always turn around and say, well, I didn't order that. Right. I said this. I said that. You know, so now what I've done is I've customized it for them. Right. And I'm the only one, and I hope nobody takes this idea, because if you do, you're going to say, they're going to say, well, you copied it from Henry, from Pro Coach Henry. I've added color. Color is beautiful, okay? I've added color, and it's not cheap. I've added new designs. I've matched even their, their, their best favorite team out there. Let's say the Raiders. I have a gold and black silver product. I have the Dodgers color, blue and white. I have red and white. I got beautiful colors. Now my latest ones are the chromes and the golds. I mean, those are beautiful colors. Metallic blues. I got it. I got it all. Got it all, yeah. Candy apple reds. I mean, I got it all. So I'm the only company that has done this. And that's why I've taken myself to another level. And that's what makes you original. Originality is key. That's key. And who doesn't like color? A little yeah. flavor in the... I mean, exactly. It's, it's like, you know, it's like putting, you know, the... Um, <clears throat> when you order a sundae, you know, you put the strawberries right. up on top. That's that's uh, icing on the cake right there. That's beautiful, you know. People love it. Yeah. Wow. You know, and it attracts people. Especially if that's your favorite color. If it's your favorite color and you see it... You're buying it. You're, you're buying, buying it. Right. Because you're like, man, not only is it a good product, but that's my color. I want that one. Really? Okay. Here it is. Boom. Like giving people options as well. Right. It's not one particular color. Right. It's, you got options. That's right. People love options. They love it. Right? You want it fully loaded or you want basic, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. We have black too. Right. We have black. We got all white. White is very popular. Right. So we got it all. So, um, you know, just look at our site and you'll see it. So if there's a message you can give to an upcoming boxer Ooh, or a, 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 a young boy or girl who want to mm -hmm. be an athlete, not necessarily boxing, but in any sport, what mm -hmm. kind of advice would you give them? Well, the advice that I would highly recommend, you know, and this goes to the parent, listen to your child. Don't force your child. Don't. Let them fulfill your dream. Let them fulfill their dream. In other words, if they want to box, or if they want gymnastics, or if they want to learn how to sing or play the piano, give them that opportunity. Don't force it upon them, because they will rebel, and you're going to waste a lot of money and a lot of years. And when they have the opportunity to make their own decisions, they're going to let you down. So, I rather say, I'm here to support you as far as you want to be supported. Mm -hmm. But the moment you tell me you're done and I could see that you don't have that interest anymore, I'm going to stop. But I allowed you to make your own decision. I did not force this, and so many parents force this upon their kid because they see it on TV and they're like, you could be that way, you could be that way, you could be that way. Well. Not really, because did he say it or did you say it? And it turned out that he said it. But when a child does something for the very first time and turns around and says, hey, I like this. I want to keep on doing this. Now, he said it. You didn't say it. He said it. And that's when you say, really? Okay. Okay. And that's, how, that's what I recommend. Do not force your child to do anything. Support them. 
in what they decided. Great advice. Well, Coach, thanks for pulling up. Appreciate you coming down, man. It was a great conversation, good input. Thank you so and much for having me. Continued success. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that I was had the opportunity to be here. You know, you had a great show, and I'm really happy and proud of you, too. Thank you. Really appreciate that. We'll have you on again, and we'll talk about maybe after Ryan's fight. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we'll bring you oh, back. Oh, well, I want to come back. We'll definitely do it. All right. Thanks again. Appreciate you. Until next time. All right. Bye.